how is everyone doing? Uh, hopefully you guys are having a good Tuesday evening. Uh, this is the first of a uh, video series I kind of wanted to start up, um, especially on the stream as well, doing uh, some character tutorials, character breakdowns for uh, characters. Uh, Kerwin, thank you for the follow, appreciate it. Um, but uh, yeah, I figured we'd start this off with a little bit of a Chip Xanath tutorial. And someone that uh, I met a couple years back at Frosty Faustings, uh, someone I talk to uh, somewhat regularly um, when it comes to fighting games, and uh, someone that's been around the FJC for a very long time. You all may know this person, Chris Chaos, uh, who's going to be kind enough to join me tonight to kind of like break down this character, talk about Chip and everything. Chris, how you doing, man? You have anything doing all right? Oh yeah, doing very good, you know, get some time, downtime, enjoy some strive, you know, having some fun, you know? So, yeah. uh, I'm like, I've just been killing it, man. Absolutely. Right, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so, so, I, I, how have you been enjoying strive so far? Have you been, uh, liking it as far as, uh, I, the game goes? I actually, I love this game, actually. It's, like, I, it, it's, it's like, when I played it the first time, like, you know, at Frosty when they had the beta there, I was sure. like, I, I had some, like, you know, a unique feeling about it, like, oh, it's different, I, I kind of like where they're going, but this is definitely gonna take some time, but, you know, when those betas came out and I started playing a lot more, I just grew to love the game. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice, because I know you've been putting a lot of time into it, which is the reason why I wanted to reach out to you, uh, to kind of do this, uh, chip tutorial, because, uh, I know you have been uh, playing this character since uh, the betas and even into this game now, obviously, and everything. And, uh, you know, overall, what do you think of Chip so far, as far as the character um, and everything? I feel that Chip is one of the stronger characters in the game. Um, his versatility, uh, even with, like, you no know, the the limitations of movement uh, that are within the system of the game, the character's speed... And just uh no like no option of versatility on uh, no for offense and defense just makes him a, a very scary character to deal with. Um, a lot of people have kind of been like you know saying he's top one, uh, but that's kind of like the chip thing. Uh, when the character always drops and people see the character dying immediately, they're just like, oh this character's so bad, he's he's terrible. <laughs> and then like the chip players actually learn the character and they're like, oh my god, this character's top one. It, yeah. it happens in every version. <laughs> it, it's kind of funny. Because, yeah, you brought that up, too, and everything. And I know uh, one of our local chip players uh, here in Jacksonville, uh, Tupi God, uh, I talked mm -hmm. to on a regular basis and everything, too. Um, at one of our locals that we had uh, Sunday night, I was asking him how he felt about chip. And he, like, first words out of his mouth were, uh, he's top tier. He's best one. Like, he literally <laughs> thinks that chip is incredibly strong. And it, it's kind of funny because, like, that's always been kind of like the history of Chip, like you mentioned, like in all previous other games and everything, where like people mm -hmm. aren't sure about the character, like they think he's not that good to begin with or whatever, and then they get more time with him, and then they're like, oh, wait a minute, no, this character <laughs> still is wild, to say the least, especially with like some of the tools that he has now in Strive. Um, oh, yeah. it, like he's like, he looks like he is incredibly fun to play. Um, from the things I've been able to see. Um, so you kind of brought up your a little bit of your history. So you've played Chip basically in every iteration of Gear, or have you played other characters? Or I have played other I have played one other character. Um, like, I kind of, like, was learning the game. Obviously, I started, like, everyone else playing either Soul or Kai, but um, I eventually landed on Chip in, uh, like, no, because I started with uh, Accent Core, Double X Accent Core. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, <clears throat> obviously with the help of, like, other chip players such as, uh, you know, Shin Kenso, BZB, Lil Majin. Yes, Lil Majin played Guilty Gear for those who didn't know. Um, but yeah, I ended up getting a lot of, like, you know, um, like, uh, experience and learning from those guys, and that's how I ended up becoming the chip player I am today. Mm -hmm. Um, I played him in Axon Core, I played him in the update in Plus R, I played him in Extra Sign and Revelator, and then in Rev 2... I was kind of a little taken away from the character and um, was and wanted something different. So I ended up going to answer, funny enough. Oh, and, wow. Um, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, no, I ended up going to answer because he provided me with a lot of fun in the game that I had missed with, like, pretty much when you play the same thing over the years and it's kind of like barely any changes or whatnot. Um, I kind of got a little bored of it. It's not, and it's crazy because, like, Chip is still top tier in, in Rev 2, he's still good. Um, but I was just 
wanted something different. So answer was the way for me. And then now in Strive, um, I was kind of worried that he was going to be, you no, know, you know, the same thing I played over the years and over time. And like, there are some similarities still, but like this character is way more fun than I've ever played him in uh, previous versions, in my opinion. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah no, it's a... Uh... Yeah, I, I forgot you actually messed around with answer back in Rev a little bit. I was like, that was a good uh, reminder of that. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that character was interesting to say the least. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I guess like he kind of preluded a little bit um, with Strive uh, now being out out and about and everything. And we've had the game now for three weeks and everything. What was it about Chip that made you want want to pick him up in Strive? Like what? What did you? What made you decide to play him? What did you like about him? That kind of led to the, you maining him right now. Um. Well, it's a. It's funny enough. It's not even just about the character. It's more of, of what I want in a fighting game character, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. Um. It's not the chip itself, but like you know, it being chip and me having history with him does help out a lot. I won't. I will not deny that at all. Mm -hmm. Um. But it's more the fact of like just. I like movement and various options. And Chip, in my opinion, has like some of the have, like the most options in this game, uh, offensively and defensively. Um, like I've always mentioned, to everyone Chip has everything in the game except the health bar. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like um, pretty much no. I always like it when I have uh, more than one option for a situation, whether it's a neutral situation, defensive situation, offense. Uh, you know. Uh, and Chip provides all of that. And, um, of course, like, having the speed to back that up, you know, also makes it, you know, way more fun for me to, like, you know, to mess around with that because, you know, I, I enjoy the speeds to that Chip is. Yeah, he definitely is incredibly <laughs> fast. And, like, it's funny when you play against someone that knows how to utilize the character and utilize that movement and everything, it is mm -hmm. one of the tougher tasks when it comes to fighting games, to say the least, in fighting uh, Chip with what he's able to do and everything. So... Yeah, that's like I said, and this is the reason why I kind of wanted to bring you on to kind of like showcase what Chip is able to do. By the way, uh, Mr. JDE, thanks for the follow as well. Um, so let's get into it. Let's talk about Chip. Uh, of course, you know, Chip Zanuff, uh, speed character, like you mentioned, uh, has a ton of mobility, uh, really solid normals, and uh, yeah, it can just pressure you like no other character in this game especially with what he's able to do so let's kind of talk about like some of the basic stuff as uh, yeah that's a little demo there of what <laughs> this character can do um <laughs> but uh you know let's, let's let's talk about the you know the, for anyone new that's wanting to pick up this character like you know what are some of the things that that new players should kind of like you know start utilizing and start working on with this character like what would be the basic like chip game plan for anyone that's picking up this character. Well, first and foremost is uh, no. The most important thing is obviously understanding your movement, uh, being able to know when to run, when to walk, utilizing your jump options. All of that's going to come into key of how you find success in, mo in moving with this character and uh, getting into strike zone so that you can take advantage of you know, the fast buttons that you has. I mean, this man has a three frame five P and a, and a seven frame five K. Like you know, at close range he can be very scary. Also, things chaining into each other, right? But the thing is, is that with these short-range buttons, he does have some, for, you know, decent written buttons in neutral. But obviously, everybody wants to get in, uh, of course, and uh, get the pressure game going. Um, so that's kind of why I say that movement is the very most important. You have three jumps, and then of course, like you know, he's one of the few characters that have that, if not the only one. And then of course, you know, with that, when you super jump in this game, you only usually get one jump. Chip gets two. So having the knowledge and knowing when to utilize your m mobility and your uh, offensive actions by jumping around or even defensively could e can one get you get your game started or get you out of sticky situations. Mm -hmm. So it not only does it help you offensively, it helps you defensively and uh, being aware of that. So whenever you're starting with Chip, you want to go ahead and make sure that you're moving around so you're comfortable with the, how he moves around at his speed. You know. Um, because if you are uh, if you are not unsure of like you know, how you want to attack people, if you know how to move, it'll keep you alive a lot longer. This is like your key point in survival, right? Um, another big thing, obviously, is knowing like you know how to strike people and uh, utilizing that speed to help you out with that. This character is very fast and and can overwhelm your opponents by just his speed alone. Um, so like just doing stuff like like you know getting a knockdown and 
I know. If you get, like, for example, just get knocked down, you can do stuff like that. There's a cross-up. You know, it's a lot of things that, like, you can uh, do to pounce on the uh, your opponent and make them have to think about a thousand things at once. And uh, once you get your, you know, once you uh, understand how your strings work and how you can delay them and how they uh, all work together and, and put, piece the puzzle together, uh, you'll end up creating your own type of offense to, uh, you know, have your opponents, you know, either one, be scared to do anything, or two, want to take a risk and try to hit you. Because everyone knows you have almost no help. So mm -hmm. everybody wants to hit this character as much as possible. So that's why using your speed to your advantage, you know, running in, backdashing, you know, with getting people to whiff. This character can definitely whiff punish, you know, like, like a god. He's a whiff punish for god. Can literally run in and just get something started, like, just at the blink of an eye. Or just, like, soul, like, whiffing far S or something like that, right? Uh, you can also just like no, let's see, well, I mean, it's like success or something like that. Like, let's see, just uh, let's see here. All right, let's see. Let's try this. Like, let's see. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a little punch game. Yeah. Like yeah. you know, just utilizing the, that movement and ability. Um, uh, just like no, we'll actually have your opponents like think twice about certain things or be more antsy and swing at you. The thing is, you know, you don't know how your opponent's gonna react, which is why I say learning how to use your actions. No, in, in offense, it's going to be very important. You don't want to always swing at your opponent. You don't always want to be in throw range either. Because, uh, like, as probably you don't understand, a lot of people have been pressing a lot in this game. And, of course, like with uh, everybody, with you being in this type of range of skier, if you're not ready and you swing too early or too late, you can definitely get counter hit and take a lot of damage. Where then you have to think, man, should I burst? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and yeah. like you mentioned, like you mentioned, um, Especially with like how throws work in this game. I mean, granted, it's a frame slower than normal games, but it's still a two-frame throw. Um, yeah. So you always have to be weary of that and everything. Um, it was interesting you showed um, that one punish that you had with, uh, you know, making Soul Whiff punish uh, success and then going kind of into your route there. Um, mm -hmm. So like <clears throat> with the with that movement aspect. Um, that's obviously, like you said, that's the um, important thing to get familiar with, especially with Chip, because like you were mentioning earlier, um, the fact he has no health, the fact that he does take damage uh, like crazy and everything, being that, you know, pesky nuisance mobility-wise that's frustrating the opponent, um, mm -hmm. definitely that's the first uh, kind of key for Chip as far as being successful with him. Absolutely. Uh, like yeah, like that. That's absolutely true. Um, like a lot of people just have this like mentality of like you know a character's fast. I'm gonna just grab you and press these buttons. But um, you no, know, there's so many ways and options that people have to go ahead and just deal with like direct direct approaches. Like you know, you can just run up and try to press buttons. Soul can just like six p you. Um, Kai can just like you no know, do like a a far s and poke you out, or like someone can have an uppercut to check you or anything like that. And if you're not paying attention to those type of uh, if you're not paying attention on how you're approaching your your offense and understanding what your opponent is doing on defense, you're going to be in for a world of hurt. Mm -hmm. And um, and and that's kind of one of the key things you have to understand when playing this character. You know what you signed up for when you picked this character. <laughs> it's like you you have all the crazy offense in the world. You have a lot of various options, you know, to play with this character. You just don't have a health bar. So you like you no know, like so um, in the words of um you no. Know, no, uh, one of my favorite Guilty Gear players, Steve H. Steve Harrison. You know, you live, you live, with, like no, no, you live with the consequences. You live with the decisions you make. You gotta live with those consequences. Mm -hmm. Like you know, if you make a mistake, you gotta live with that. You gotta hold that. You know, mm -hmm. if you run in and Soul decides to just do uppercut RC into like seventy five percent of your debt, your health. Guess what? You deserve that. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Just an example there. Look, I mean, we're talking about Chip's life bar. Look at much of damage they did just off of one DP. <laughs> that was like almost forty percent. Right. So yeah. <laughs> and that wasn't even counter hit. That was no. a normal hit. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's case in point right there. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So yeah. So that's obviously like the first step in the Chip mm -hmm. game plan for new players is. Understanding the mobility of the character and understanding your ranges when it comes to your mobility and everything. Well, let's talk about once you get that down and once you get in. The, what are like some of the go-to normals for this character? As far as like when you're in, you finally got your pressure down. As far as your mobility goes and everything, 
What are some of the key normals you want to utilize uh, with Chip, especially in neutral? Okay, definitely 5k. This is always a really good checking button because one, like, it's whip chainable, like, it just goes into each other. And, like, you can dash up and always check people. It's also jump cancelable on, like, I'm pretty sure it's jump cancel and block. Yep, jump cancelable and block and on hit. So, like, you can. If you're unsure, you don't. You, like, you know, you want something that's non committal, 5k is your go to, right? Mm -hmm. Um. If you're trying to go ahead and uh, do like a light whiff punish or something like or just, like catch people like trying to press, far S is also really good. Like uh so and then also going to Rekka, which is a uh, pretty generally safe pressure. The far S and the Rekka, you know, at max range, keeps you within out of striking range of uh most characters in the game. So mm. if you're trying to go ahead and um you know try to get your offense started, um like you know it's not so it's not so it's a little committal, but not very much. As you see the recovery on it's not the bad not too bad. But you do have, it's very wise, it's, it's definitely one of those things where you want to make sure you're hitting the opponent or making them block it, so you can at least cancel into one hit Rekka, because it gives you that range and space for it, right? Um, and then, uh, so, so even on hit, or on, even on block, you're totally fine, because, um, uh, you know, you're totally fine because you're in a safe range. Like, Soul can't really do too much at max range, uh, you know, when, uh, Rekka hits them, right? Um, let's see, another good button, um... Like, no, for neutral, I would say, 5H. This is one of Chip's most underrated button in the game. Because if we, if I, if I you know, if funny enough, the hitbox reveal came out in, um, in this game, uh, the palm of Chip's, the, chip, the palm of Chip's hands has no hurtbox. So anybody tries to swing at you, and th this is also a 10 frame normal, you can just, like, you can just very carefully, like, you know, if you're going about it, and, like, you know, like that combos. I whiff the first re out on counter hit. I literally get a counter hit, and then I can whiff him in the second wreck and will hit. <laughs> maybe, maybe Soul but is yeah. always the exception, <laughs> but no, no. You, 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 you but saw yeah. it, you saw earlier though. You were able to counter hit, and then you were able to go right into Rekka, um yeah. earlier. So yeah, that's uh that's interesting. I did not know the fact that that move no longer has a hurt box extension on it. Yeah. Yep. It's uh, all red. So like obviously like you know with uh you no know, soul I obviously extended his uh, hitbox with IP. You can potentially get in there, but that's still a GameStop trade for Chet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like honestly, because you're trading damage of a five P with a five heavy. Um, so, right. Yeah. Big so like in the end, with that. the only downside is that you know you can low profile this stuff. So like so like you no know, a character that has a low profile and sweep like soul can cook you if you're throwing this out without um you know. Well, with, yeah, without or the dog. Or that. Yeah, you know, or worse. <laughs> See? Yeah. <laughs> so, as good as a button as this is, it does have weaknesses. So, you want to make sure you use it sparingly or as a whip punishment tool so that you can actually get your offense going. Mm -hmm. You know? So, but uh, it's, um, like I mentioned, it's not really used now because a lot of chip players are worried about, like, you know, getting into close range and uh, not doing too much whip punishing. But this is definitely a good whip punishment tool to get started with. Same thing with Far S. But it's very good. But Faris is much better on uh, obviously on hit or block. Same thing with Five H. You can also you know string into it from a special move there. Um, so and then of course I'm forgetting about the old faithful 2D. See, this is easily one of the best sweeps in the game. Nah, uh, not the best, but definitely one of them. And uh, the fact that he can special cancel off his sweep is is. Makes it, um, makes it, um, you know, allow him to go ahead and get some cool things going. Like, uh, it's like, five, five, uh, and I can get a cross up off of the knockdown. And so, his, uh, jumping Oki is a lot different from this game than it was in previous because there's no FB canceling. Like, well, at least FB canceling how it works in previous games. Right. So that's kind of why you see a lot of chip players doing a lot of J2K now. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, Overall, for like, you no, know, your grounded neutral options, they're all very good. Um, and of course, like, you know, for counter poking, as I mentioned, 5H, and then also, like, you no, know, no, Far S, and then also 6P, because it has upper body involve. So if anybody tries to jump in on you or anything like that, his 6P is very good on dealing with uh, those type of situations. The problem is, is that if you are too close, your opponent can get behind you. But as you see, like, you no, know, for most jump ins, it's very good at stopping that type of stuff. Yeah, and that's the other thing too is, uh, um, it's funny too because like, 
especially in previous games, I felt like Chip has always had like one of the better six P's in the game. Um, mm -hmm. Like especially in uh, Exard, especially in that life cycle, his six P like I don't, I, I don't, I don't think enough <laughs> people talked about how good his six P was in that game. Um, especially with like all the different pickups and everything. Um, and uh, going from there, uh, yeah, uh, JD, yeah, no worries. That's why we're uh, doing this uh, uh, to show the uh, show what Chip's able to do. So hopefully this is helping you out a little bit. Um, okay, so those are some of the ground normals. Uh, there was one normal that that was in the air that we. It's funny we were talking about this normal a little bit before we started the stream, um, and I've been seeing a lot of Chip players use this normal. And yep, that one right there, jump two K. <laughs> Um, yeah. What okay. what is making what is it about this button that has has had all the chip players using this move uh, like it's literally their last move in the repertoire? Because this move is literally a moving torpedo from what I've been seeing as far as like trying to anti air it and trying to challenge it. Well, the thing is about the J two K is that one. Um, it's you no. Know, it uh, actually helps him get a little bit of trajectory because like you know, it changes his trajectory a little bit, halts his uh, jump ins, moves mm -hmm. him forward a little bit. You know, like you know, having with that option there, and also it's plus. So um, mm. like okay. uh, it's, it's it's plus on block, and he can also like you know chain into it, it on hit. So like he can go to like you know on regular hit, he can uh, do J two K and go on a two K, and uh, let's see two K records or on counter hit, he could even go 5k, Rekka, Rekka, you know, that type of stuff. Mm. So, like, there's a lot of options that the character has. Oh, wow. Wasn't paying attention to the girl. Okay. But, um, <laughs> yeah. The thing is, is that, uh, Shouts his training mode. <laughs> but yeah, so, the reason why people are using J2K is because it definitely opens up a lot of options for the character and to get his offense started because, um, you know, Obviously, approaching on the ground in this game, where like you know, ah, from from my experience playing the game, they want you to be a bit more, uh, you know, they want you to be more on the ground. I and obviously, Chip having a lot of the air mobility, he has he's one of the you know special characters that can utilize the air game. So, um, if like you know, he does have like all these good buttons here here and there, but they, like you know, but like other obviously, if uh, someone's on it, they can definitely snipe him for trying to run in and uh, get something going. Mm. So. A lot of ship players have been trying to go to the J2K here because it is definitely the party starter. Like, yeah. It definitely gets it definitely gets their offense started quickly because um, the opponent has to respect that or or disrespect with a very committal option like a DP or something like that. Um, sure. And and uh, so like you know which is still risky in itself because it's pl it's a plus normal. But um then of course on hit you no know, he gets a combo and uh, on block he can uh, pretty much frame trap you or not. And uh, it can get scary, but um, but that's kind of what I was mentioning earlier. A lot of people are gonna always want to swing on you, so like even when you have like you know the, a little bit of frame advantage, um, no, pe some people are willing to risk it and throw something out there at you. So um, no, a lot of chip players have, they have to be more aware of how to use this uh, option here. Absolutely, it's a very good option. It's a very yeah. good option. It's a very good <laughs> option from like the chip players I've. Uh... Definitely been playing online, especially and everything. Uh, by the way, Super Saiyan Kid, uh, thanks for the follow as well. And uh, True God Abyss, thanks for the uh, Tier 1 sub as well. 18 months, man. Greatly appreciate that. Um, yeah, so I know, like, in previous iterations, too, some of the other go-to buttons for Chip in the air. Um, but like you said, it's changed a lot with the meta with him and everything. Uh, Jump Heavy Slash used to be a go-to for this character uh, quite, a, quite a bit as well. Is that still a pretty decent normal for him to use in the air? Yeah, it is. It's just that, like, now you have to use it uh, hitting lower. Because mm -hmm. if you don't, if you're doing it too high with the way how uh, uh, jumping normal, like, jumping recovery works in this game, um, you can get slapped out of things. You know, if I hit this too high, like, if I hit this too high, I, I'm not going to get, like, a combo. And then, of course, like, you know, you just... Like it puts it pretty much puts you in a very awkward situation. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of things is that like a lot of people used to really jump use this button and um, and get like combos and whatnot and like um, and and if someone blocks the jump heavy, if uh, you were doing it so high enough, 
you would at least get like you know no legitimate pressure but like if someone like standing blocks it and you do it way too high then uh, you can pretty much lose your turn uh, or you okay. have to take a risk or you have to take a risk like do a jump h and then like you know like a, ju a jump h and it hits twice before it hits the ground do like a dp or something or like you know or just like commit to blocking which is what i'm going to suggest to you mm -hmm. to block if you hit this normal too high it's yeah. not your turn anymore so yeah. a lot of people but the thing is a lot of people are willing to risk it and um i'm not really a fan of it like you know but you know some people will do it um but yeah jump h is still a good go-to you can even still use it as a uh, as a jump in punish as i uh, as i showed like with earlier with uh when uh soul does far s yes he still get you no know, good combos off mm -hmm. uh but that was awful like pretty much an instant air dash see here um so like it's all about how you go about uh utilizing that uh button so it's all about how you're utilizing it. So it's not a dead button. It's just not used as much because Jump 2K has so much higher reward now. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's a much safer option. And um, a lot of people have been leaning towards it, especially the newer players. You'll still see some OG chip players still messing around with Jump H because this button is still good. We still have faith in this thing. Mm -hmm. And um, But like we have definitely gone to starting using J2K. But what well, funny thing is, is that, no, no, a little history. Jump 2K was never this good. <laughs> in previous game, it was never this good. Right. You with this button? You with this button in any previous Guilty Gear? That was a death sentence. Like you got this. You, it was because you messed up your FD mix up, and then everyone's just like, "All right, yeah. it's time to die." <laughs> it's go time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because that's the one thing. Like when I was playing a, a chip player a while back, I was like, "Man, they are using 2K like great, like jump 2K like crazy." And then, like, learning more about it, it's like, oh, it's making sense now why that is, too. Um, another air normal that was kind of a, a staple for Chip as well, Jump D. Uh, has always been a really strong button uh, in the air for Chip. How about in this iteration? Um, it's not so great. It's still useful, but it's not as great as it used to be. Like, right. on counter hit, you can get, like, a whole tumble or a slide in other versions. You can run up and get a combo. Not mm -hmm. in this game. Um... Especially now with a lot of people who used to like, you know, usually like to jump around and use like JD jumping backwards. And since like the dust is uh, tied to your throw now, mm -hmm. a lot of people have been having this habit of having a jump, you no know, jump back JD and then getting an air throw. And then it's like, well, I'm about to die. Mm -hmm. So you have to be a lot more precise on how you're using it. Gotcha. Jump is still good. Jump is still solid. Um, it's just not like, you no, know, as it's not as crazy good as it used to be. Right. But it still has a very decent hitbox. Like, okay. and of course, and of course, leading to that type of stuff, it can definitely lead to like solid combos as a jump in. Um, but a lot of people, like, no, a lot of people don't really like the risk of whiffing J2K because of the landing recovery on it. It mm. always had landing recovery in the past, but like, obviously, with the way the game works, and now there's even more. So, like, a lot of people have been using it more as like an air to air than anything rather than jumping in with people. Um, see, it's a. Cause like no, it's no special cancelable still. Um, but yeah, not it's it's not to say that jump D is a bad button. It's just not as great as it used to be. That's all. Gotcha. Yeah, which makes sense because like I said, I remember the hitbox on that button was it literally looked like you'd take out a 747 with how big the hitbox <laughs> was with it and everything. But like now, yeah, it's like I said, now I'm not seeing as many chip players use that, so I was just kind of curious about it. Um, mm -hmm. as far as its utilization and everything. So, okay. So we kind of went over the key normals of what to use for your chip. Now let's talk about, uh, the key specials for this character. Uh, which kind of is, some of these, uh, specials have kind of had a little bit of a facelift with the way they worked in previous, uh, games. Uh, Alpha Blade being the prime example for it. Oh, yeah. Uh, before we move on to that, I forgot to mention one more, uh, normal. Jump okay. Up. All right. Okay. This, this button is, like, Chip's best air-to-air. -air. Easily mm -hmm. for like rain. Uh, JP still good at close range, but like uh, obviously, uh, this being a two hit normal, even in the past and even now, this is your going to be your go to air air to air, and um, and uh, it just checks the opponent. So like if you're having like issues fighting care, just like to jump around or players that want to jump a lot, you can just like do all this and be able to check that. But yeah, um, your main two go to air to air is going to be um, JK. Okay. But yeah, um, I, I I wanted to like mention that before we moved on. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, but, mm -hmm. okay. um, so as you mentioned already, with uh, there's been a lot, quite a bit of changes, right? 
Uh, first off, Alpha Blade, because now this game, this move is definitely one of those that are very like a, a chip staple, but it's changed now. Um, in most ranges, it can is a cross up now. Mm. So um, let's see here. Whoops. So um, no, you a uh, range is still hitting front, or, or not at all. My bad. Hmm. hmm. Missing the ranges on that. Or maybe I'm too far. But yeah, in most in like further ranges, you can still it'll still hit in front. But of course, in closer ranges, it's considered a cross up. Right. And um, in this game, they gave him another alpha blade, which is a more vertical, is a more is a diagonal alpha, which can also cross up if you're not in close range, and also gets him up here and uh, gets him in the skies, and then he can jump cancel. He can jump after that. He has air options after this. So a lot of things have been uh changed where like you know you're going to be more offensive with your alpha blades where you know in previous iterations you would never want to just do raw alpha blades like crazy or anything like that but in this game it feels like they really want you to utilize this move to like you know get your offensive offensive stuff going and also your mix-ups and all that type of stuff so a lot of that has changed in the past because you know just doing like you know Tech Alpha will like also be like you know kind of crazy or whatnot, but now like you no know, because of how the properties of it like working where it'll cross up on the opponent, kind of crazy. Like you get a lot of like silly stuff like you no know, cross ups uh with like you no, know, art blue RC red RC stuff like that and uh, also in neutral. So hmm. it's a definitely a different application now than it was before. To here. Quick question um, before uh, we go with that. So you, when you did the vertical um, Alpha Blade, uh, mm -hmm. I know you mentioned earlier he's able to uh, jump cancel and retain some of his uh, um, his air, uh, air, air options or anything. Does that mean he mm -hmm. still will be able to triple jump, or is it still, or does it become more of a double jump? This is a double jump because okay. the Alpha Blade you know, takes one of the jump. Take it takes one of the options. Okay, gotcha. Yep. Okay, let's go to that. And of course, like in the air, if you try to do the vertical one, you'll go down instead. So, oh, um, okay. So yeah, like you know, the only alpha blades you have in the air are the ones that go down and the one that goes straight across. Okay. Um, the only one that goes upward is the one on the ground. Is K alpha on the ground? Let's see here. Okay. Um, so that's uh, one of the things that uh, you no, know, you have to take consideration. So a lot of like you no, know, a lot of people have been dealing with like chip kind of going here and then like kind of evading it and then going up and throwing him, and then a lot of chip players uh. They want to forget because they're so used to just zipping around with this character uh, that, hey, I have air options after this. I don't need to be thrown. I can just jump away and get out of here. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of one of the big things I was saying about, like, movement is key. Understanding your movement options after things is very important as well. You know, knowing what you can jump cancel, what you can't jump cancel. Um, you know, how, like, you know, doing certain things to uh, retain your air movement. All that's uh, valuable as a chip player. Okay. Good to know. Good um, to know. Uh, so, real quick, uh, Shin uh, Rikiri, thanks for the follow as well, and Starks Online also, thanks for the uh, follow as well. Hopefully, you guys have been enjoying the uh, Chip 101 with uh, friend Chris Chaos here as we're learning more about some of the intricacies of this character. So, yeah, uh, the Alpha Blade, like you mentioned, uh, a lot of changes mm -hmm. with it, with the fact that you're able to, um, you know cross up with it or anything kind of reminds me of like how in uh, marvel 3 virgil's uh, rapid slash works oh, in a sense yeah. too. um so like it's definitely something to you know kind of keep in mind with that and everything and it's also tricky too because when you were first displaying it like for showcasing it i was trying mm -hmm. to block one way and i got hit with it but then at a different range as i was blocking the same way the block registered as being that same side block so that's also tricky in itself too to where like you really, you know, have to know the ranges coming at you if you're playing against a chip on knowing oh, yeah. where to block with that. Mm hmm Like, you know, it's either knowing how to block or how to evade it, right? Because, mm -hmm. like, even on the ground, like, Alpha Blade does have some startup. You can, like, just neutral, you just jump away. Like, you just jump back and then, bam. Because there's so much recovery on ground Alpha, you can, mm -hmm. you can potentially get a punish for a chip player just, you know, just trying to just do it and not having any way of trying to cancel it, right? Right. So... As, even though it's hard to deal with, if you understand like how like the how his moveset works, you can come up with proper punishes to deal with it. Mm -hmm. uh, you uh, you know the chip player is definitely going to like the chip player is definitely going to cheese you out if you're not ready. So that's why I tell everybody like you know learn what this character does and uh, have a game plan when fighting this character because mm -hmm. if you don't know how to deal with this character, you're gonna lose. This <laughs> is like you know it's, you're, a lot of things are going to be happening you won't understand and you're gonna like you know buckle under the pressure. 
uh, unless you can maintain control, right? Yeah. But um, but yeah, that's one of the things that uh, like you know you have to know like you no. Know, Am I in range of getting crossed up? Should I be jump blocking this? Or should I, you know, can I jump away and punish? Like, you know, even though Chip has a lot of options to go ahead and get things going and uh, get the party started and uh, make it hard for the opponent or overwhelm them, um, you know, it's as long as you keep your like, as long as, like, you no, know, an opponent can keep their cool and make those proper decisions, they can definitely manage the matchup. Like, but, but again, Chip's one of the stronger characters in the game, at least in my opinion, one of the stronger characters in the game. It's not going to be easy, especially when uh, someone knows how to pilot the character, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that so. definitely makes sense when it comes to that. So, um, another, I, I noticed another special Chip players have been liking to utilize too, and this kind of goes on top of like your mix up options and being able to condition your opponent and everything. Of course, a go to uh, his command grab, the uh, leaf throw. Uh, which I feel like it's, it seems like it's better than it's been in previous iterations. Let's see here. Um, this is probably the second best version of his, uh, command grab. Mm -hmm. Um, it's very fast, um, and just certain ways of, like, you no know, trying to, like, you no know, like, can't, like, getting RC cancels off of it. The combos you can get off of it now are much easier and has much, has higher damage. So, um, you know, like, you know. Oh, wow. Uh, did I RC that? Whoops. And of course, like, you know, with fast RC, you can pretty much get some uh, some good solid damage. And, um, makes it... Of course, like, you know, of course in the situation has, it also adds a lot to, like, you know, potential wall breaks. So if you pretty much get a command grab in your corner, um, you can definitely get a wall break, which puts you in that positive bonus, which, uh, you know, brings up your offense and defense and the meter game. Yeah. And Chip having more damage and uh, a little bit more defense, <laughs> like, is very, very good for him. <laughs> yeah, Chip with all three of those elements, getting extra meter and everything, too, to where, like, he's able to get even more wild conversions using meter. Absolutely. Yeah, it becomes, like, the wall break option, I would have to think, is probably the best option for Chip because of all those. Oh, absolutely. Like, you know, if you can get your offense going and you can get, like, a wall break or two here and there to, like, you know, to keep your positive bonus and then just maintain the usage and then, like, you know, use that meter to go ahead and RCE and get your extensions for the corner carries. But the corner carry combos and extensions is very good for this character. And, like, the, the damage adds up over time. And then, like, you know, if you want, like, you no, know, the character doesn't dish out damage like a soul, obviously. So, like, you know, getting a, getting the, the wall breaking your opponent three times in one round can be very demoralizing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like, so, <Yeah>. um, <laughs> so like, you just get just yeah. taking a tour around the entire world and basically and yeah like <laughs> especially like like you mentioned like it, that's like just big momentum in general when it comes to chip which you know that's i think that's another way to cl kind of classify him whereas you know we talked about like having to utilize all of his movement options or things like that he's very much the type of character like if he gets the momentum and everything it just literally becomes like a snowball effect against his character because of just like how he could be pesky with everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. So a lot of things that this character does. And of course, like, you know, just leading to a lot of things. It's very scary. It, it could be very scary and very crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like, and of course, he's one of the few characters that can actually utilize like the RC mechanic. Like, I feel has like so, a lot of the best util uh, utilization of RC mechanic. But we'll get into that later. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, we, we're going back into special moves, because I know we just very much been focusing on just a couple things. Right. Went over, uh, Alpha Blade, we went over the Command Grab, but, uh, just to mention, like I said, this is his second best Command Grab, in my opinion. The yeah. number one Command Grab that he's, that, for Chip, is Plus R's Command Grab. Because, at least in this one, at least with this Command Grab, you can slap him out of it. Like, Soul can, like, 5k the, the Command Grab or punch him out of it. Uh, you can at least attack him. In, in Plus R, he was Strike Invincible. Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you legitimately had to jump out or yeah. air throw. Him. See, so like, which are still both good options here. Um, you can still like air throw him or jump away from it if need be, uh, for those type of situations. But um, right here, but, yeah, yeah, you can still hit him, uh, and it's a little harder. But um, no, but yeah, but if your character has like better ground buttons to like anti air, obviously you want to use those instead. Right. Uh, yeah, there's, yeah. Some that, there's some characters that like immediately fast options like JK or JD or something like that to like kind of just deal with it. 
But yeah, mm-hmm. find out which option is good for your character, and uh, you'll be able to deal like to be able to deal with this. Because um, if uh, the chip player can definitely feel like they can just no command grab you for days, they're gonna do it. So I mean, look at the damage. This this is why the damage itself is a pretty good chunk there. Yeah, like no, almost twenty percent for just one command grab. And mm-hmm. by the way, no risk added to that. <laughs> so yeah, it, it can be very scary at times. Um, but yeah, um. That's uh one. That's uh one of the big things about the command grab that I wanted to mention about that. Um, another one is specials that you've probably seen a lot. The Rekka series, like you've probably see the chips doing this a lot. You know, pressuring here, walking back forward, or then you try to cheese it with the overhead, with him gets a combo and all that good stuff. Um, so about these Rekka, it uh the Rekkas are minus. Um, but this one's generally safe if done at max range. Uh, the second Rekka is a um, is a low. It's actually a low, and um, it is minus. So like you know, if you're ready for it, you can't. You should be able to punish him. Oh, hmm. Maybe with a lighter button, or did they change that in this game? Okay. No. Wow. So it's he pushes you out so far that it's much difficult to actually punish him for it. Okay. Let's see here. So yeah. So in this game, you kind of have to respect that. But the thing is, like after the second Rekka, he has to make a commitment or get or walk away. Mm-hmm. So, so pretty much when you're dealing with the Rekkas, you block low, and um, and if he walks back or if he uh, tries to delay the overhead, you can pretty much overblock block block the overhead, and then like if you're on it, you can definitely punish it. That overhead is definitely minus. Let's see here, yeah. Let's see what's right. He's gonna go straight into it. Yeah, yeah. there's a punish for it and everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was, there, yeah. Was, there was a little rollback that was happening, but it was all good. We, we, we got the point across with it. Yeah, yeah. so the thing is that if you're dealing with the record pressure, like, no, Chip's record pressure is definitely going to be his go-to, uh, because, uh, you know, since they're special moves, they do chip damage. So you pretty much know putting the opponent in a situation where they have to, you know, lose a little bit of health or lose a little bit of meter, depending on the situation. Uh, and so, like, if you have them at low health uh, range of situations, and you have, like, the corner, you can, you can like, you know, pretty much, uh, uh, man... Like all this type of stuff, and cancel an Eureka, cancel an Eureka, stuff like that, and makes it a little harder for the opponent. So, um, obviously, when you're dealing with button Eureka, Eureka, after the second Eureka, that's definitely your time to like jump out or get out of the situation. Um, unless, like, no, he has to like RC or no, no, once again, make a commitment to like, you know, deal with that. So, if he doesn't RC, that's pretty much the end after the second. And then he could potentially go for the overhead Eureka, which once we've already mentioned before. Very minus on block, punishable on block. Uh, so, so yeah, it's a little bit different on how you used to deal with it in previous iterations, where like you would usually just like, oh, the second Rekka has very little to no pushback, so I'm gonna just block this and just come out with a 5k. But um, in this version, he has a bit more pushback, so you kind of have to hold that. Mm-hmm. See, or instant block, or if you're a god, instant block it, and then uh, where, where there's nothing there, and then we'll have have fun with uh, like a, a jab punishing something. And it's like I get it. Not a lot of people are very happy with jab punishes or anything like that. But anything that kind of maintains control of this character and slows down the pace is means it's in your favor. If, yeah. Uh, this... <laughs> Go ahead. And also, Sorry. like we were mentioning, no, you're fine. Um, and like you were mentioning earlier, we were talking about, you know, especially against a character like Chip, where he takes a lot of damage. Even the jab, like, punch pressure or, you know, punch punishes eventually tack on even more because it is Chip. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure Soul has something like you no know, crouching crab, crouching jab, six H that actually works on uh, Soul or something like that. Like, well, yeah, like like two K two P or like it's a six H. Did you see that was two hit combo? Sweet. Yeah. Like, oh. Bang, and then you get a knockdown situation on the character, which mm-hmm. is very important in this game because unlike other Guilty Gears, uh, everyone has a universal wake up now. So. Unlike in other Guilty Gears where everyone had variable wake-ups, you had to work around your Oki and dealing with that. You don't have to worry about that in this game anymore. Because mm-hmm. uh, Chip used to have one of the slowest wake-up timings in, the, in like, the game. So you had to work around your Oki differently. Now that that's not the case, he actually has to hold these uh, offensive situations on wake-up now. Or has to, like, you no know, risk it, uh, has to like, take a, uh, a risk just like everyone else does now. So if you get a knockdown situation on Chip, um, no, you don't have to worry about that variable anymore. So like no, so like getting like your two P two P six H a soul or whatever to get the knockdown is very is it may not do a lot of damage, but at least gives you the, the the positional situation to where like now he has to like respect 
And then of course if you have meter you can just RC it or something like that and then like no you're at you're at full on advantage, right? Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, like, you know, little tip for tack hits on the character will definitely add up over time and maintain, you know, control of the pace. I know that's anti chip even though we're talking about chip. But um, <laughs> I've seen a lot of cries about this character and um and so I in the midst of like explaining how good things are, I also want to go ahead and just mention some weaknesses here and there, you know? Sure. And I and th that's an important aspect too because of the fact it's like you know, we could obviously discuss the strengths of this character throughout and everything, but there are definitely some key weaknesses you have to be kind of cognizant of. Uh, mm -hmm. One of those, like we've been talking about, is lower health. Um, mm -hmm. or, I shouldn't say lower health, but like he does take more damage as far mm -hmm. as uh, the other characters uh, go in the game and everything. And, you know, there's got to be, while, yes, he, you know, kind of like promotes like being rush down and be and trying to utilize as much pressure as possible because of the way he works there's got to be a little sense of control with it too because you can't be 100 percent reckless with this character which will yeah. get you killed very quickly especially in a game like strive oh most definitely the damage in this game you can definitely like you can definitely see you like everyone's been been uh having their gripes and, and their complaints and like or their joys with it right mm -hmm. um and funny enough I have no problems with the damage in this game because, uh, you know, like, I feel very comfortable with myself with this character. I understand, like, you know, the, this, like, you know, how to go about with, how I go about my actions, how I move around with the character, and how I can minimize my opponent's options uh, on how they can hit me when I'm moving around. Mm -hmm. You know, like, so even if they do get a hit, it would be like m as minimal damage as possible. Um, but yeah, um, like, you know. The, the 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 big thing that I do want to mention is that a lot of chip special moves outside of like the Rekkas are very are like you know have a lot of recovery. Like mm -hmm. you no, know, like I mentioned around ground alpha. If I don't RC, if you block that or get away from that, and I and I don't RC, I don't RC it. There's a lot of lag time there. I have to like you know yeah. If you're ready on it, if I miss this, like if, like you no, know, it's to take some time to get used to. But obviously, if I miss this, bam, I can definitely yeah. get hit for it. And of course, like if you deal with like the air alpha, if I don't jump around, you can jump air throw me or jump do a jump button. Like you know, like just like you can like do like a neutral jump air throw. If I'm not on it, like uh, if I'm not on like trying to jump away, uh, you can definitely snipe this character. So yeah, it's all about like understanding like how to like get, like you know get the chip to overcommit. If you can get uh, this player to uh, uh, a chip player to overcommit and do something risky, and then you're able to like you no know, deal with it on a defensive manner. That's how you get your game. Yeah. That's how you yeah. deal with the care. Mm -hmm. Um so like, you know, like and I know like you know everyone hates the, the D word defense. I get it. Like, you know, it's it's not it's not in our genes, it's not in our DNA, but like, you know, like you you're you're gonna have to like you no know, D up like and that's like you no know, blocking or even moving around, like evasion, you know? Um evasion no evasion movement evasive movement is also defense. So if you know how to move around and evade certain stuff from this character you can find opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. here. So, because, um, like, you know, like I mentioned, you know, a lot of the special moves are very risky. Like, a lot of, like, recovery. If you can get this character to commit or feel like they have the DP, then, of course, obviously, if, you miss, if he misses a DP, it's like, bang, bang, and that bam, bam, thank you, ma'am. This character just lost, like, 50%. Or basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, for missing um, a beta blade. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah. uh, that definitely hurts him, for sure. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the, the good thing is the thing is about Beta Blade is that like funny enough, there's uh, the funny thing about this DP is that like it's a little bit nerfed compared to previous versions because there's only two frames of full involve for this DP, but the rest of the DP has upper body involve, so it's okay as a reversal, but it's very good as an anti air. Hmm. Um, so like yeah, so if anyone jumps in on him, like like it's all upper body involve. And of course, like, you know, it's a little bit, it's, just, it's a very weird application. A lot of chip players now are still trying to get used to it. Um, so, like, you know, I've been in situations where I try to do wake up DP and then I'll do the startup of, like, beta blade and then take a trade on a midi. Mm. So it's very weird. So, like, you know, I'm not exactly sure how many characters have setups like that, but it's something to look into, right? Um, but... No, so Chim's DP in this game is going to be more used as like an actual anti-air because of the upper of the upper body involve and the lack of invulnerability that it used to have. 
Cause um, it, you definitely had well, it had, definitely had well more than two frames of uh invol, full invol before before Strive. Um, not really remember exactly how much, but like no, that was not the case before. And but the thing is that's different is that the air version does also have two two frames of, of uh strike invol. So like if he does the air version, unlike previous versions, he can actually be invinci he can actually invincible DP through things. See, um, so yeah. but like that was not the case in previous versions. That was not involved at all. Hmm. And um and like yeah, the air DP was just fast. Um and recovered fast. And I'm botching the air, uh, air DP. But as you can see, the air DP also recovers faster uh than uh your than uh the standard DP here. So, a lot of people would probably do like running DP and then recovers in like four to five frames if I remember correctly, while the grounded DP recovers in like you know eight to ten. Can't remember that exact number, but uh, but yeah, um, the air DP is actually you no know, pretty good for like you know certain situations. Still a risk, but um, no, it has its uses. Um, but yeah, that's kind of one of the things is a uh, very uh, it's very different from what we're used to with th with this character, but. I think over time we'll end up having like you know a solid understanding and use of how to utilize the DP in other situations. Sure. Um, because in previous versions we had actually just do running DP to like check people for certain situations and um, and like you know and it would even whip punish certain buttons. Um, you can kind of do that now, but like people are very uncomfortable with it at the moment. I say I think we can give it more time before uh, I give like a full verdict on the on how good or not good the dp is but we'll see um let's see oh another uh move gamma blade all right so this <laughs> move as a as a chip aid, i i have some feelings about this one. Uh, <laughs> it, you're not the only one there's there's been quite a few people that's uh, voiced their opinion about gamma blade especially with how it worked in like exard for example and everything and then how it is now it's like hmm interesting yeah. but uh yeah gamma blade is uh it's a thing yeah. as you so, like <laughs> as we like to say right now so the thing is is that like it's it's good and not so great right mainly because gamma blade is plus six on block um however when you throw the clone out in this version you can now swing at this thing and uh chip will take damage um that was never the case before and um like yeah so, um, yeah, it's, huh. <laughs> it's uh, one of those things that I'm going to have to get used to in a lot of, so, like, you can't really throw Gamma out as much as you'd like because of just certain situations like that. <laughs> so, you don't, the thing is, like, you don't get a full combo, but still, that's a nice chunk of damage, right? But, yeah, the thing is, is that, yeah. like, there's a lot of, even with that risk there, you just... We will still gamma do PRC, and then like you know the the actual hurt box will actually go away on it. So like you can get in and um. Oh okay. So pretty much if you're trying to use gamma blade to try to gain control and uh, maintain the offense, you're gonna have to like you know get like the oh, whoops get like uh the, the PRC. It's just better. To... But yeah, as you can see the the potential in it. Um, so we can't really mm -hmm. throw it out all willy-nilly like we used to and then like force plus situations and then get our offense going And you have to like sneak it in now like for example like uh, like no if, like if you're uh, down back for a bit let's see here. so Like you can kind of sneak it in here And like you know that should get a 5k to check somebody from trying to like press or jump out um, like no and of course you know because so that's like a deep you can dp that but like most people can't really press and if they do press um no you're still within a range of where you can like check someone for trying to move forward with like 5k after recovering sure uh like you know then of course like you know okay. you get some crazy okay. stuff like that yeah which is uh, i don't know why i did not mention this but uh like you know in the uh with uh alpha blade is that when it comes to the wall you can now wall run if you hold forward, and you get some mix-ups. Mm -hmm. So if uh, if you get your opponent sleeping, and you can keep the corner stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So yeah, like no. Sorry for rewinding back to. Uh, oh uh, no no, it's all good. Alpha. All good. But, yeah. But as you see, like you know, if used right, if used right, you can actually. 
like, yeah, uh, if I can just, like, like, as you can see there, you get some, uh, really good, like, no, hard to see potential mix-ups here and there. Yeah. And then you have to block the gamma because even if you swung on it, like, you're not going to stop chip because of the PRC, because the PRC saving you for that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so in this game, you're not going to be trying to, like, you know, check people in neutral with Gamma Blade anymore because of just how the properties of it is here. Unless you have, like, meter to, like, kind of save it or someone's completely sleeping at the wheel. Right. <laughs> like, you know, which can happen and can happen, but, like, you know, like, make your decisions wisely on if you if you should or shouldn't try it, right? Mm. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. There's a no. Am I forgetting something? Wait, alpha, beta, gamma, uppercut, um, command grab. Let's see here. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything else. I'm, unless I'm crazy. Uh, but uh, you know. I know Shuriken. Um. Ah. Yep. So Shuriken is um, actually it's actually good in this game. Funny enough. Um, so in okay. previous versions. You would have a slow one and a fast one. The slow one pretty much means you're, you're like, you know, committing to fall, like falling no matter what. You can do anything. The fast one, you were able to get options after that, right? Mm -hmm. So, let's see here. But yeah, now with this version, if I like, you no, know, jump back, shuriken, I can dash in after it, no matter which, because like, there's only one speed of shuriken now. So in a sense, it's kind of like utilizing it to maybe help cover an approach a little bit. Oh yeah, or cover yourself. Like you know, walking, you know, going back and just you know throwing this out of here, and just checking someone for trying to come up here. Like it's a little slower, so you have to like know how to finesse it. But um, it does. It definitely like you no know, go in. Bam, bam. As you see, if they try to come up and then they run into it, you get a you know a pushback situation in the air. To where like you know they get hit bam you create space mm -hmm. uh obviously with the how like you know the speed of it is a little bit startup so you have to know how to utilize this um but it does have its uses and it does cover certain space uh on the uh to like you no know, stop people from wanting to come through come in and approach right right so yeah so yeah understanding and uh understanding the angle that it goes at and know how to utilize um and knowing how to utilize the shuriken will definitely help out a lot you're not going to see it too much because of the risk that comes behind it because people can just run in and run under you if they read you just jumping backwards and just run through. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, at the end of the day, like, you know... Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's kind of one of the things about Shirk is you're not going to, like, you're not going to see it too much unless it's more of an, in a passive manner because obviously with this game, if you're being very passive, there's this thing called negative penalty. I'm pretty sure we all seen or heard about that. Yeah. No. So the thing is, is that with uh, this will also help you kind of like you know stave away negative penalty because when you're doing offensive actions, it all it kind of like offsets the uh, the negative penalty. So if you're chip, even though you're dashing back, you're gonna take a little bit of like you know add on to that negative penalty a bit. But if you're using like you know the shuriken toss, it'll um it'll stave a little bit of, of that back. So. Like obviously, if after a couple dashes, if I would have done it without the throwing throwing it, I would have definitely went into negative at that time. But like, no, me throwing the shuriken like kind of like you no know, shaves off a little bit from that. So if you're moving, if you need to create some space and you don't want to like you no know, have too much of a, uh, a penalty on being negative, um, definitely a lot of ways of trying to like you no know, deal with that, right? See here? Right. Well, yeah. Um. So like, it's. It's going to be on how you go about utilizing it, and, uh, like, and it does 9 damage, so, like, you know, it's just, and it's also a special move, so it chips. So, um, like, if, you no, know, if uh, someone's not paying attention to their health and they're just running into stuff, and they have no health, you can just toss this thing out, and they'll just run into it and die. It's it's a, it's a funny way. People have died this way before in plenty of games. Trust me. Mm -hmm. Believe me in this one. I've seen it happen before. <laughs> and it's kind of hilarious. <laughs> I can imagine. Sheesh. So it's like, man, you read that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so yeah. all right. So yeah, that cover is all of his specials in for the most part. Um then of course he has his uh he has his supers, um mm -hmm. which uh definitely look cool. That, I know that super there is typically a go to, especially if you want to try to wall break. Oh yeah. Uh this is definitely your wall break super. Um the thing is is that like it does good damage when you do it raw, but if you like comboing to it, it does very little damage. So if so 
So pretty much, you want to be very careful on how you're going about that. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of people, like, previous chip players, like, you know, from, like, we would just, like, that would be our, like, you go to, like, kind of, like, kill through the guts. But for some reason, it just doesn't quite, you know, do the job right now. Mm -hmm. But this is, if you want to break the wall and get the hard knockdown, you uh, you use this, you use uh, that super. Mm -hmm. And of course, he has another one. This guy here. Definitely hits on multiple sides. Um, and uh, so it can definitely be very tricky. You can also combo into it as well. And, uh, well, you know, you get a hard knockdown situation and you're pretty much mid-screen, right? And you get a cross up there, if done right. You're right. See here? So yeah. Now, so I know right. in previous in previous games that that's super sometimes can be a little tricky to block because of the fact that it it does cross up. So you actually have to like go the opposite way of where it's happening. I think I, in oh. this game though, it seems like it's a bit easier to block because it looks like it only does like once now. Well, yeah. Like the thing is, like. The the way that the super works, uh, even in previous versions, like like no, it's all fast. If you're able to block it once, you don't have to switch your guard. The problem is in previous games, if you instant block the first hit, the second hit will cross you up. Uh, so people okay. like Maybe see that's the why I mean. yeah. So people usually see it and like you know and freak out and instantly like try to block it and that like you know and block the whole back and then they'll get an instant block and then a the second attack will come through and slap them up. Mm -hmm. Um. This is not too much the case in this game, especially with how tight instant block is now. So you don't have to worry about that too much. Um, and then, um, and, and 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 even in uh, when you block this super, he still goes in the same direction he always has, going forward in the direction he faced when he did the super. So a lot of people would kind of see this all this zipping stuff and crazy or not, and then they block it and they're just like, oh god, what side is he on? Um, he's always on the side he originally faced. He's going to go in that direction. So if you if you if you block it, be ready. Like, um, so, yeah. Bam. And I was holding back. That's a punch. Yeah, yeah, you saw the punish <laughs> pop up and everything. So, yeah. So, um, so that's the one thing that did not change about it. It's still punishable the same way. Um, mm. obviously some characters have a hard time to get there, like Potemkin, obviously. But, uh, yeah, there's other characters that can get to that point. And, um, but... I do feel that like uh, the the Zansai Ryoga super, um, the you know, shooting, uh, the, the maximum spider super is probably his best one. Um, you no, know, if you want to go for damage, um, but like the other super uh, is definitely still good uh, for certain situations, especially for like a wall break because um, a hard knockdown in this game is very valuable. Yes. Very valuable. Yes. Um. So yeah, it's. Like, no. The thing is, is that, like, you know, in this game, you like, you know, with how things are going, you're using a lot of your RCs. You're using, like, your meter on, like, roaming cancels, funny enough, uh, so to, like, you know, get those type of situations. Uh, but, you no. Know, but for, like, cashing out, like, um, you know, especially on a wall stick, you definitely want to use the wall break super. And then, of course, like, in certain various situations, you want to use the other one if you want to keep things mid screen and keep mm -hmm. your opponent guessing. Um, so it's all very situational on which one you want. Um, so I that, think that's kind of one of the things I don't think chip supers are like the the greatest supers in the game, but they have their uses, right? Let's see, like you know, obviously there's other supers in the game that uh you know are you no know, higher damaging or you know or more stable stuff like that. But that's kind of the thing. Um, if chip is kind of throwing these supers as well, like you know even even the rush super who blocks this, if you're like you know let's see here. Like, like he's pretty much you're like he's pretty much in the striking zone. I have to I have to wait. I have to give that up. I have to give right. that up. So, um, so that's the thing. If you can get Chip to actually use a super and you're able to block it or like in or like you know evade it in a way, um, pretty much burn some meter and then you get your opportunity to play right. So that's kind of one of the reasons of like why well, I meant getting Chip to overextend right. Uh, that's how you get this character to kill himself. And so the the the, the like the, the way you uh, if you're able to build your game plan around that, it makes dealing and managing the character a bit easier. Um, but yeah, like it's kind of really weird because I, I don't want to say it's super suck because I, I don't think so. I just think that like you know from the damage that you've seen from the supers in the previous versions to now, uh, it's a it's a little bit of like a, a it's a little bit of a downward uh, a, a downward uh. I'm gonna, I, uh, it's 
This is not as great as yeah. it used to be. Not, it, not as not as advantageous as what other games it might have been or thing. Because it seems like, especially with you know how our seeing is Roman canceling in this game, it seems like the meter usage for Chip is more. It's more advantageous for him to be utilizing it with Roman cancels uh, than his uh, supers and overdrives. Yeah, from my experience, absolutely. Um, like you get so much from just like the RC mechanic itself that um, you get to actually, you know, get you get more damage in better situations for that type of stuff. Like, oh, uh, let's see here. Let me see. There's a specific set of I was working on. It's like stuff like that. And like, you know, just using 50 meter to go ahead and like, you know, to get like a little bit of a mix up situation on a RC on a wake up. Mm -hmm. um, like, even that, like, even though I get like, the thing is like, yeah, I get a mix up and I get to go ahead and uh, I cross them up. I get them closer to the corner, even though it's the side switch. Um, so it gives me still offensive positioning. And then of course, like, you know, like, uh, of course, like, you know, having situations like I showed earlier, like, you know, getting the RC combo off the throw. It, like, you know, giving you that little type of, uh, like, he gets a lot more juice from using the Roman cancel system, uh, than he would for cashing out of supers, like you mentioned earlier. Right. I 100% agree with that, and from playing the character the entire time, I definitely, uh, you know, see, see that as well. And, um, you know, so, like, you're gonna pretty much only use supers for, like, kill situations or wall break, right? right. You're not gonna just throw them out. Uh, you're gonna use mainly your meter for like uh rcs like you know you no know, red rcs for extensions uh blue rcs for like setups uh or like even neutral situations if you're trying to play footsies and then it, it just allows you to like do so much with this character especially with like the the button options that he's had before wow Let's see here Let's see here Let's see here ah! Like, you know, so, like, you're, you get, like, sweep starter combos and stuff like that. Um, things you would naturally be able to get um, to, you know, get either your corner carry or your damage into a potential setup. So, like, that's kind of one of the things that got a lot of chip players who used to play him previously uh, a little bit in the funk in the very beginning. Because they're, they're not used to having to play him like that. Right. Um, but new game, new system. Like, you know, like, all about evolution, right? So, um... So, but the thing is, is that I like how he's changed. I like the things that um that he's can do now. Um, the fact that they combine his uh, his alpha blade and teleport in the same move is 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 quite is quite very fun and interesting. Yeah. Because like even even then I can like I can like get some crazy stuff like if so if I get somebody sleeping or whatnot, right? So like no, so it, it it offers a lot of a a lot of opportunities, especially like if you can get uh get ready for it, you know, for those type of situations. Because just having just that option to be able to just get past an opponent and not hit them and cancel, right? And like, like just like it gives you, it's a fifty meter teleport, but like you know you still have your teleports that just hit in within another move. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, and um, it's a little more resource utilization. You have to use with it and everything but yeah i mean it's still there because like even then like you mentioned like the side swap that just happened there it's just like oh wait a minute he's on the other side opponent mm -hmm. still kind of has to react to that in in one way or another so um yeah. yeah there's definitely still that little layer of offense where you know chip can definitely uh appear to a different side and definitely uh kind of mess around with the opponent so so to speak especially mm -hmm. if they are like a reactionary opponent um, oh, and they yeah. have to they have to react to that side swap and then everything else that chip does um all right so yeah that kind of goes over like all of like chips tools um as far as his mobility his normals his specials mm -hmm. supers gone over all that so those are all the the keys and all the pieces of the puzzle that makes chip in guilty gear strive so from what you've seen uh, with new players uh, picking up chip and everything, what are some like common beginner mistakes that beginner players should avoid using when it comes to chip? All right. Um, well, I'll say that 
you know, being direct, like being direct on the uh, uh, running at your opponents or uh, approaching your opponent is definitely a no-go. This character can definitely do that. And if your opponent's not ready for it, you can definitely just run in and just run game on whoever it is. But the problem is that, like, you know, as your opponents get better, they're going to be more ready for those type of approaches. Like, you know, like trying to run in from full screen and just trying to get something going and force the situation is not really going to be favorable for you. Like, this character has so much mobility that, like, finessing your opponent is going to be way more valuable. Like, you know, running in and then, running in and then, like, backdashing or something like that to get a, to get a whiff punish on, on those situations like that to get the, you know, the things that, like, you don't want to get hit by to come out so you can get them. There. Uh, let's see. Also, you know, using special moves without a purpose, you know? Um, that's one of the, a lot of people kind of just like, no, like, well, it's very, like, I can't deal with this. I'm just going to go ahead and try to do all this crazy stuff and then, like, try to, like, you know, make it hard for them to go ahead and deal with me. Um, a lot of people, a lot of new players have this tendency of just, like, you know, doing all these overcommittal things. And it gets them in a game where it just disses out the damage and you can just explode. So, like, I've, I've definitely seen and fought other chip players who've done these type of things. And I'm like... If you're, a, if you're willing to go ahead and risk these type of things, if someone knows how to move around a little bit, like in the, with their character in this game, and they get you to whiff, you're in trouble. So, I like, no, the biggest don't is to, you know, make committal options, right? Um, you know, um, another thing I want to, what's another big thing? Um, I see. Um, managing your meter, right? Chip is very good at utilizing the meter system in this game. So, like, you know, you don't want to go ahead and, like, utilize your meter in certain purposes and situations where um, it could um, not be too valuable. Like, um, if you're going to use, a, your, like, your, your your RC situations, you want to make sure that, like, either you're getting a, a good situation where the opponent's knocked down, you get a wall break, or you get the corner. Um, you know, doing something like, you no, know, or if, like, you no, know, if it's a very tough situation... I understand, like, are seeing to save yourself, right? Um, so, like, be very aware of how you use your meter and where you're going to spend it. And, um, let's see. Um, and, yeah, it's still pretty early. So, like, you know, those are just the two biggest things I've seen so far. Sure. I'm pretty sure there's other things that have probably come up. Um, but, like, those are, like, the two, like, no, understanding how to, like, no, like, not just dumping your meter. Because, oh yeah, like, not just dumping your meter, because, yeah, granted, Chip is a very fast character, and he runs very fast, he can definitely build the meter for that, but if you're just dumping your meter like crazy, like, you know, there's a penalty gain in this meter, in this game, where there's still a time frame where you have to, like, you know, get a cooldown after using, like, you know, meter ineffectively. Right. Chip without meter can still play the game very well, but Chip with meter is very scary, and if you just, it's, it's like having a loaded gun, right? And then, like, you just shoot the bullets, like, away, I like, you know, like, to, like, outside of, like, you no, know, away from the target. And then you're just like, all right, here you go. And then, um, then, like, you just shot all your bullets. <laughs> I'm just going to punch you in the face now. <laughs> right. Yeah, so, so, like you said, and again, it's, it's kind of like what we mentioned earlier. It's almost like you got to play him with, a, like, a controlled frenzy, in mm -hmm. a sense. You know, like, just, like, uh, a controlled uh, chaos, if you will. No pun intended. Pretty much. Yeah. Oh yeah, like, no. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Like, um, no, because the thing is, like, you do want to overwhelm, but you don't want to be too risky about it. Right. You want to make sure that, um, no, like, no, whatever you're doing has a purpose, right? Because if you go in and you don't think about how you're going about things, you could just run into like a DP or or run into something that you're just unprepared for, and then it can rattle you. Like, mm -hmm. I've seen people just, like, you know, do something and then just, like, lose 65%, and then now they're in a the corner, and they have to deal with soldiers doing far S, far S, 6 e like, you yeah. know, all this type of stuff. And now, like, now you have to block. And uh, and then now you have to also worry about how much risk gauge is going up. And then now you have to worry about if he's going to throw you or, or hit you. Like, you know, you're putting a really garbage strike throw mix-up because you wouldn't take that risk. You know, you, you got to live with the uh, decisions that you make, you know, like, you know. Pay, no, you, know, you paid the cost, now you gotta go ahead and uh, there's a consequence with everything, good or bad. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, if you're playing this character and, um, and you're having some struggles, just think about, like, you no, know, how am I approaching my opponent? How am I approaching with this character? Am I putting myself at risk? Um, like, you know, am I am I using my resources effectively? Um, let's see. And, and like, you know, and am I getting my opponents to commit? And if I am, 
am I taking advantage of it properly? If I'm if I'm not getting them to commit, how can I get them to feel uncomfortable? Because this character can definitely do that. If you don't get your opponent to feel uncomfortable, then like no, people tend to overextend, which is the one thing they want Chip to do. Because as I mentioned before, you get him to use more of his overcommittal options. Chip Chip becomes uh, a punching bag. So, like no, be very aware of how you're approaching with him, and uh, and 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 understand your opponent's intentions which is one of the hardest things to do in fighting but like if, if, if you were trying to become a better chip player um the more you play and the more you like you know, are seeing this situation building on these situations the easier it is for you to like you know get a better read on how your opponent will react you know create you know have your game plan ready to go ahead and be like okay this is i have this situation so i can get these options to come happen and then be ready for whatever options that you're paying for and if it doesn't happen, be okay with it. Be like, okay, well, I didn't get this. So, but like, no, let me, what, well, let me try something else or let me see if I can get something else to happen. It's all about varying your options. And uh, it's like I mentioned before, Chip has so many options. Um, no, to, no, to like attack, defend, maneuver. And so, like, you know, there's many ways of going about it. Just because you can't figure it out right now doesn't mean that you can go to the lab and figure it out later or watch matches and get inspiration like no guilty of strive is still a brand new fighting game right now um like and chip i feel is one of the strongest characters in the game he just comes with a cost if you're wrong like very wrong mm. like you know <laughs> just take your time with it don't give up you know and of course it's like you know ask questions like this is a very brand new fighting game everyone's starting from scratch there's a lot of veterans who are just like i don't know what's going on Right. And um, <laughs> so, like, you know, like, once again, no, it's a learning process. Um, I always see Chip, all, like, being one of the most popular characters in the very beginning. And um, a lot, and then after a few months, that character just dies down. Um, I, I, it kind of makes me sad to see that because I, I like seeing the character. I like seeing a reputation, rep, uh, representation of that character sure. being played. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not me. Even if it's not Kensa or 2P God or BZB or Lil Majin or the or the big names, you know, or like Bears or anything like that. Right. Even though, even right. with those names out there, it's always good to see that those players doing well and eating. But it's always very good to see like one Guilty Gear Strive blowing up the way it did and having so many people play it. But it also makes me happy to see more people playing Chip. It's like you know, and and I just want people to try to stick it out and stick around and uh, don't give up. If you have any questions? Ask around. No. No, a lot more people are, very, are a bit more willing to talk now than they ever were. So, take advantage of a uh, take advantage of a uh, no. If you find somebody that you can talk to or lab with, take advantage of that. You know, take no, go for it. Talk to them, lab it up, and have fun. Like most important thing, have fun with this character, right? <laughs> Absolutely, and I think uh, that kind of uh, gives like the uh, final thoughts about Chip and kind of wrapping up uh, with it and everything. Um, and uh, yeah, I think all real solid advice, especially with, uh, you know, learning uh, a character like Chip or even like you said, like even veterans has played this character in different iterations and is, you know, still trying to get used to him and strive a uh, ton of resources out there um, to definitely check out. And speaking of resources, uh, before <laughs> we wrap up, uh, Chris, where can people find you, man? Where, where are you on the uh, on the social links there? All right. Well, I'm very, I'm very active on Twitter right now. Um, you can find me at uh, Chris Chaos underscore two one. Um, so if you're trying, like, you know, obviously you just want to say hips up, or if you have any questions about the character, or have any issues with labbing, because I love labbing, hit me up with a question. I'll try to figure it out and help you out with that. Um, I occasionally stream on Twitch. I'm trying to be better at that. Um, like, you know, if you're interested to see like any of the content there, or like, you know, catch me when I am streaming. You can follow me at uh, Chris underscore chaos underscore. Um, I'm doing. I know people. Have been, I'm, I'm once again. First off, I am sorry for those that have been asking me to stream. I have been having a lot going on with work lately sure. and um, yep. being very tired. Um, but I, I promise you guys, want to be very active streaming because uh, I know people have been asking questions for that. But uh, if you wanted to like know catch my streams, I will be doing my best to go ahead and stream on there at Chris underscore chaos underscore. Um, Less you, I will definitely be doing my best to try to stream on Wednesdays or Thursdays. Um, those seem to be the most uh, available days for me currently. So I'm going to go ahead and try to like, you know, get something. I'm not going to say this Wednesday, but 
I'm gonna try to get something going for Thursday so we can uh you know have start small and then work our way in. There you go. Nothing wrong with that at all, man. Well, I think, uh, yeah, it's a lot of valuable information, especially with this character. Uh, even some things, like, that I never knew, like, especially fighting the character and everything, stuff like that. So, I think, uh, think all in all, as far as this uh, tutorial series that I'm trying to put together, I think it's a good start. I think it's a good uh, foundation of uh, where to go from here. But, uh, yeah, man. Dude, Chris, I appreciate the time, man. I appreciate you... Uh, you know, coming through and uh, kind of kickstarting this little project and everything like that. And uh, yeah, man, like you said, like a, you mentioned earlier, definitely follow him on Twitter, uh, on all the social links. Uh, very smart player, especially when it comes to uh, characters like Chip and uh, you know, just a very smart fighting game player uh, in general. When it comes to uh, the homie himself, uh, Chris Chaos. So, Chris, appreciate your time, man. I mean, but thank you for having me. Love it here. It was all mad fun. Seriously. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, guys, hopefully you uh, enjoyed that. Like I said, this is kind of like the first of the series I'm trying to get going here, especially with, like, uh, some characters that you may not see too often and, uh, you know, kind of just, like, showcasing more of what this game has to offer, especially uh, with its uh, characters and everything. Um, if you like what you saw, definitely throw a follow on the... Uh, uh, Twitch here. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter at the underscore RCB underscore TV. Um, I do post all my updates as far as when I do stream and um, also, you know, we kind of doing like an online tournament series as well with uh, Lost Premise and Eternal Tyson um, that you can definitely check out as well. And uh, Chris, you didn't have to do that, man, but I appreciate it. Thank you for that uh, Twitch Prime, man. Appreciate hey. it, dude. Um, but yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, <laughs> Appreciate you guys watching. Appreciate you guys checking this out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Uh, this will also be uploaded on uh, on my YouTube channel as well, which is RCB TV. Um, expect that probably sometime later in the week. Uh, that will be uploaded and uh, definitely be able to catch out and everything. So with all that said, guys, appreciate y'all watching. Appreciate y'all coming through. Any uh, final uh, words from you, Chris, before we wrap up? Keep playing Guilty Gear. Like, seriously. Like... I love the fact that, like, I've always wanted Guilty Gear to be this big, and I'm actually happy to see so many people playing it and enjoying it. And if you're having a blast and enjoying this game, keep playing it. If you if you, if uh, if you feel like this isn't the game for you, I understand. I just hope that you walk away having some enjoyment with the game. But uh, always striving, always having fun. Keep playing gear. Let's go. Absolutely. So with that said, we'll wrap up here. Thanks again for watching, guys. I'll check you next time. Take care. Be easy. Peace.